Hey guys, Nathan here. So today we're gonna go over one of my favorite features in Resolve for color grade management. And we're talking about groups. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16, and this feature can totally be used in the free version. So we just have this short film that I worked on earlier this year called Home Sick, super short, link down in the description. And it's got a bunch of different scenes in it. So a couple key locations, and it's got like two or three different shots at each location. So this is a perfect scenario to use groups. So we're gonna go into our color page. So for this short, one of the ideas was to have each space to have its own kind of unique look. So in this office, we want all these shots to have kind of a similar-ish vibe so it feels like one cohesive space. So one way we could go about doing this is create a look based on one of the shots. So let's just go to this one here and I'm just gonna start from the beginning. So to start things off, I am using Resolve Color Management and I can show you that if we go into Project Settings down here and I'm outputting everything to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 and I'll leave a video down in the description where you can learn more about Resolve Color Management. Anyway, so we're just gonna get things balanced. Super quick way is use the white balance eyedropper. Your mileage may vary with it. I find sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not great, but just to double check, I do like to make a little power window around something that I know is supposed to be white. Take a peek at it, and the waveform looks like it's coming up pretty white. We want everything to be on top of each other in our waveform, and yeah, I think that's pretty much bang on in this case, so that's good. So then we'll just disable that window, and then maybe just expand our image a little bit, you know, bring down the lift. Bring up the gain. There, now we have it in kind of a good starting space. So now we can add our basic look. So I like to make most of my looks in the offset and an easy way to do this is we go into printer light hotkeys. We can see it more easily on the primary bars. And then you just use your number pad to control each of the red, green, and blue channels. So like nine is up for blue, four is down for red, and maybe let's bump up the green a little bit with eight and it's just that easy. And then we can just balance out our blacks in the shadows here. Just trying to make everything line up on the low end of our scopes. And let's just bring down the low range of Scooch. Perfect. So that's our basic look. Now what we can do is we can grab a still of this, then go into our gallery, and then go into our other shots, and maybe append the node graph, get rid of this first shot, and then we kind of have our look applied. Okay, that's one way we can go about it, but you can do it way faster with groups. Check this out. And we're just gonna delete these nodes. Now, I'm gonna go in, right click, and go up to, if I wanna make a new group, I would click add into new group, but I already have a group where this fits into fairly well. So I'm gonna hit add into current group. Now we see a look already applied to this, but how did that happen? We don't see anything on our node tree but if we look up here, we see we now have four little dots. So we're on dot number two. Let's go to the first one, group pre-clip. And then the third one is group post-clip. And then the final one is the timeline. So if we just go to another clip that's not in a group, you always have access to timeline and clip back to a grouped clip. So things happen in the exact order that you would imagine. So you have the group pre-clip. So any effects would then go into the clip and then into the group post clip. So then if you wanna affect everything on the timeline, you can also throw something in here. But the two that we'll focus on today is the post clip and the pre clip. So any adjustments that you make to these node trees have an impact on everything within the group. So let's just add a couple more shots here. So we're gonna add these two shots and add them into the current group. Okay, great. Now, let's go into our post clip. I'm gonna add a new node with Alt S or Option S on Mac, and then let's just make this thing super duper dark. Okay, great. Now, if we go and check these other shots, they've also been impacted. So, this is a really easy way to have a global kind of a grade applied to a number of clips, and you can do any type of balancing that you may need to do on the clip node tree, so you have lots of control. And then also, if you wanna do something like noise reduction or something that you want to happen before everything, you can do that easily in the group pre-clip, which also affects everything in the group. At any time, you can also right click, go into groups, and you can rename a specific group if you'd like. But what if you have one shot that's fairly similar to the rest, but you want it to have its own distinct look that's just slightly different? You could start and grade it all over again, but a simple way to take what you have in the post 
and pre-clip and bring that into the clip node tree is to right click down in clips here and go up to collapse group grades. This is going to take anything that was in the pre-clip, which we didn't have anything, so we can just delete that, and anything that's in the post-clip and collapse it into the clip node tree. So now we have everything here and we can make any type of adjustments that we may need to make, brighter, darker, everything like that. So you can also use groups to sort things. Now down in our clips, we have everything that's on the timeline in order, but let's say we only wanna work on a specific area. We can go down into grouped, and click whichever group we want. Now I have a number of groups here. Let's just go into kitchen. So now everything that is part of the kitchen group is shown right here. So each clip can only belong to one group at a time and if you think about it, it really makes sense. Let's say for example, we want to switch one of the groups that it's in. We can do that fairly easily. We're gonna right click, click on our groups and let's go with the office group and assigned to that group. So now we can go back into clips, select grouped, and go into office. And now this is part of the office group. And if you want, you can always just remove from group, and now it's no longer in there. And if you wanna go back to everything in your clips, just click up here and click all clips. And now we can see all the clips in our timeline again. So anyway, folks, I hope that helps you learn a little bit more about groups and how you can use them for your projects in the future and make things just a little bit faster and more streamlined. So if you like this video, be sure to hit that button and get subscribed for lots more content like this. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can hit the dislike button too. Anyway, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.